everyone welcome back to rts and what do we have on tap for today well first of all i hope the summer is treating you well and i hope you're getting some scrapbooking in and playing and recording the story yes that's what it's all about so today is just not a simple record the story it's a special record the story because in this start to finish I am playing along with the beautiful Vanessa Bell and Lisa Brooks. Yes, because I love their sketch inspired series. So they asked me, would you want to join in on this round? And I was like, absolutely. You don't have to ask me twice to the table. No, I'm so excited and giddy that they asked me to play along with their sketch inspired series this round because it is a very, very fun series because it's based around sketches, of course, but then you get to see how Vanessa has her take and Lisa has their take because they have their own style. And then let's just throw me into the mix because who knows what I'll end up doing, but... I was just so excited they asked me. So let's get with the program. So for the sketch that we're going to play with today is the one I picked because Lisa picked one and Vanessa picked one. And this is the one I picked. And it is from the fabulous Laura Whitaker, February 2014. And I will have the link below to the sketchbook that Laura so graciously gifted us. And then you can actually get this whole entire sketchbook for free. Yes, for free. And so I will also include the link below to go on Laura's website, her sketch website, where you can just go to this sketch specifically if you wish to. So what I decided to do with my sketch, and actually I really didn't know because Vanessa does one page layouts and Lisa does two page layouts. You see how it makes it so special? Yes, I love this sketch inspired series. I love my layouts from the last time they did. So so excited so excited so what we did uh what lisa and vanessa decided to do on this round is that we were to pick a sketch of course and then pick a technique and then like bake you know kind of like a story prompt okay so this is my sketch and the links will be below and my story layout prompt is on the waterfront meaning anything to do with water beachy you know going to the beach boating fishing anything swimming a day at the pool anything to do with the water okay or if you had a water battle <laughs> a water fight yes water balloons going to the water park anything on the waterfront yes so mine has to do with boating and being at a day that i snapped all these nautical oh, love love nautical okay now so that's what I'm going to do. And so my technique prompt that I wanted to suggest, and you don't have to go by this, this is the sketch, but just to give you some prompts to run with it is tools and tags. Yes, tools and tags. So that means you could pick out some dies, some embossing folders, some punches, any tool at all you want to play. And I'll show, with my, show mine just a little bit. And then tags. This is my little box of tags. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do tools and tags. And the reason I did that, because in my sketch there is actually tags and there's actually elements that you could use your tools to create, okay? And then also do with what I'm going to do. I don't have a kit, so I'm gonna to have to make my embellishments because I don't have a lot of nautical themed, okay? So that is what we're gonna do. So I'm so excited that Lisa and Vanessa asked me to join in on this sketch inspired round and i'm anxious to see vanessa's take on this sketch and lisa's take on this sketch now the reason i picked this sketch was because there are some new people to sketches and i wanted to explain why i picked this sketch and let me get a piece of paper and then also to the links below for lisa and vanessa's channel will be below so hop over play along pick out this sketch for this week and play 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 yes okay so for this sketch that i picked some people would look at that and say well that's just a one photo sketch and i'm just going to whip through that i'm not even going to look at that and then some people would say well you really can't do a double page because you know how would you do that 
okay? Well, what I'm going to show is that I'm actually going to do a two-page layout using the sketch with multi-photos. And some of you will be like, what? How are you going to do that? And I'll show you because it's one of those things you have to go to the bare bones of the design, and I say that all the time, but go to the bare bones of the design and then make it your own. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I love this sketch by Laura and I would I would like to use it in the future with one photo but for what I have today I don't I look I have more than one photo okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how I'm going to take this layout the sketch and I'm going to with my layout I'm going to make it a two page with multi photos and you see this element here where the photo would be I'm going to give you some ideas as to replace that with something to emphasize your own style. So, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of stuff, right? It's a lot going on. So excited. Yes. Can I say that one more time? So, the papers I'm going to play with is by Authentique. And again, that sketch will be listed below. I'm going to play with Authentique. I'm going to get my sketch too far. And if you notice, it looks like it's just a background piece of cardstock in some just few pieces of strips of pattern paper and that's exactly how you could do that you actually could just pull out your scrap bin your scrap folder and just do this okay but I wanted to show a little bit more because you know how I play with paper and I was saying that in another video that truly in my own style paper is my main embellishment <laughs> That's how I use it. That's how I use my paper. I use it as embellishment. Okay, so I'm going to use the collection by Authentique called Seafarer. And of course, it's red, white, and blue. And it has all these beautiful icons and motifs. And I'm so excited to play with these. And anchors, you know, of course, to go along with my boating on the waterfront. I'm running out of room. On the waterfront. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I just, I love this process. I could sit here for three hours and do this, okay? Because as I'm looking through the papers, I'm thinking mood and feel. I'm going back to the day where we were on the dock and on the boat and times with our friends and just, just great times. Okay, now I want to keep this front and center because I'm going to show what we're going to do. Now I have duplicates of these. Now this Authentique came in a paper pad, so this paper is not very thick. So, which was kind of a disappointment, but I'll get off the soapbox on that. And so I know I'm going to have to use cardstock for my two page spread because this just isn't going to cut the cake. It's not going to, there's no way that's, look at that. See how that bends? There's no way that's going to hold up to photos and embellishments. Not when we're bringing out the tools. No. So I went ahead and pulled two sheets of textured basil because I already know that's going to be my background because I have so many white, you know, focus on my boat, boats, and everything at the dock. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and plus, who doesn't like red, white, and blue? Now, in with this authentic, they have white and cream. So, of course, you know, you can do anything. Okay, so that's going to be my papers. There's my photos, and there's my sketch. There's my sketch. So, you know, I do the same thing all the time, don't I? Same thing. So, what's my going to be my next step? Well, my next step was, is alphas. That just is my formula, and that's what I seem to go with. And so, I wanted to show a couple different options because I'm not working from a kit. Okay, so I wanted to show a different, a few different options. And then with this video, I don't want to make it too long because not everybody likes long videos. And since this is a collaboration, I really don't want to make it too long because there's other, there's other videos to watch in the hop. Okay, so I will come back with a finished page. I just wanted to show you what I pulled and to give you some ideas because I don't have a kit. Okay, um, this is my main, my main jam right here is my papers. And that's my mood and feel, yes. So of course, you know, you could pick the red. And I don't have a lot of red thickers. And I wanted to go with something with dimension. So I went right to my thickers. Okay, so I have these two red. Both of those will be fine. Okay. I love the style and I love the color. Okay. So now if you look at the photos in mine, what would be the other element? Now the reason I picked red is because in my photos I have the predominant color of blue. So red will make everything pop. Okay, so then what else do you have? Well, you know, anytime you do a nautical and boats, you're gonna have this silver element. Like right there, look at all the silver. So that would be your metallics, right? So I pulled out this and that's, 
if this is the hardcover font and that's all I have. I really don't know if I'm going to be able to make a war from that. But I put it in here because I don't right know yet what my title is going to be. Okay. So then you could also pick a neutral. And in this, they had the gray. So I picked gray. Okay. And this has lines through it. And I thought both of those looked nautical. Again, they're getting kind of, you know, I don't have a lot of choices. No A's, no E's. But we, we'll figure that out. Okay, and then of course you could also go with your wood grain, okay, because these were in the banner shape, so that might be something you could fit in, okay, because you know inside boats, the cabins and everything, always so much wood grain, and then you also could pick out one that had to do with maps or anything that had anything that would make you think of a compass and directions and that type of thing. So with that. Look at the different choices. Right there was one, two, three, four, five different choices to get your mood and feel in just with your alphas. Okay. Now I picked a, a, several because I wanted to show examples. If you don't have a kit and you want to go with mood and feel, how you simply can use something as basic as thickers to convey your story. Take a cue from your photos, a cue from your papers, and then a cue from your mood and feel. Okay. Now I have no idea which one I'm going to go with. That's okay. But I have options. Okay, so now I don't have a kit. So what did I do next? Well, I went and pulled just a couple of things that was either red, white, and blue or something that I thought they had to do with weather or, you know, the nautical theme. And this is, that's the only three things I picked because I, it has to be, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time looking for elements. Okay. And then also too, you have to remember, I'm pulling out tools. Okay. So this is how I will make my embellishments. Okay, and that's why I purposely did not pick a lot. And I just don't have a lot of nautical. And then also, too, I have this. I could make something, you know, with the banners and also this anchor. And, of course, tags for layering. Okay, now I wanted to show you. I have my tags in a little box here. It's just a little way I have some of them. But I also wanted to show that you can put tags actually on a jump ring. How cute is that? Just to have a little tag on a jump ring. Love that. Love that. Okay, so then what will I do next? Okay, well, I have my tools here. I have my tags. I have these lonely little three little things, <laughs> you know, but I'll, you know, that's the color scheme. So then I just went and I picked out my red and my blue color boxes. And I'll talk about these in an upcoming video. It'll probably be at the end of August. Okay, and there's all my colors. And that's what I'm going to do. That's, I'm going to put them in front of me and I will pull from them. I have enamel dots. Things like that, okay? So I have my red and my blue because that is my color scheme. And then I maybe, when I do my dyes, use my dyes, I may do things in white. And I have my embossing folders. I'll show you what they were because they are so fun. This one, and they're both by Paper Studio. They are anchors. I don't know if it shows up if I put in, if I put it in a piece of paper, does that show up better? I don't know if that shows up better, but it's it's anchors. So cute. And then my next one is, I'm going to put that back in because I have these cataloged. And so I don't want to forget which one's 37 and which one's 38. And then I have this one. And I don't know if they have a name to them. No. This is also by Paper Studio. But I thought this one looked like waves. And that's why I chose that. And so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with embossing folder on this sketch. And so you'll be like, okay, well, you have a lot going on. For this one simple little one photo sketch, you have a lot going on. So we're going to use dies, we're going to do tags, and then we're going to do something with embossing. Okay? So we will talk all about that. And my paper selection is really just going to be actually three papers. Because I'm going to use a background and this right here. So three pieces of paper. And I will come back with a finished two-page layout using this one little sketch. Okay, hang on. I'll be back. Okay, I am back with my finished layout. And I'm so excited how it turned out because this is exactly what I had in mind when I was planning this page. And so, of course, I was completely inspired by the fabulous Laura Whitaker. And so you see in her sketch, it was just a single page with a single photo. And I totally took that as a springboard and made it my own because I did a double page spread with multi photos. And so how many photos did I get? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you could have made it 11 pay 11 photo spread if you wanted to. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So I took Laura's inspiration to make this 
anchor get it <laughs> this and yes this anchoring on the left and on the right and then it's of course just a mirror image you can see it's just a mirror image okay and so what did I do well let me first of all talk about the papers the background was just a white wash blue that was in the authentic collection and then the stripe and this compass would you believe that was from the same paper yes one was the a side and one was the b side so in reality I only used three pieces of paper for this entire spread and this is how much I have left over I mean, that is really stretching your supplies. Seriously stretching your supplies. And again, I got nine photos on there. You just can't beat that. Okay, so that was the photos. And again, I went completely by Laura's sketch. Completely. Yes, I did. Because, you know, my story prompt or layout idea was on the waterfront, anything to do with water, that type of thing. And I took, uh, I used photos that I had took at the dock one day while visiting some friends and then of course the technique prompt was to use tools and tags okay and that's what I did I brought out my dies and some embossing folders and then also two tags okay so when you look at Laura's sketch now a lot of people especially you gals that do two page layouts you would probably skip over this because you would say that I have no interest in that because that's not two pages and first and second of all then it only has one photo well I want you to start looking at sketches a little different and say I can just think of it as a mirror image okay and if you have to flip it over and that if you see if you hold it up to the light you can see that'll give you the mirror image for your right hand side okay that's an easy way to do it okay now when you see this one photo start thinking instead of a photo this is what I want you to think about I want you to start thinking about journaling cards tags I want you to think about you could put titles there you could put your journaling there so when you see this little area for one photo don't even consider that a photo think of your photos being in this empty space okay that's one way you can get over that thinking well that's not gonna fit my style oh yes it can okay so that's exactly what I did in my layout where Laura had the one photo I put in my journaling or not um, I put in what I want to call them cut aparts okay and you could have also put the title here and then you could put your journaling over here okay because you could have got another photo there so you could have got 12 photos honestly one well, no, I was going to say you could have added that. So you could have put the title here, and then instead of using this, you could have put another photo. It could have been like a highlighted photo. You could have put your journaling over here. There was just so many different ways to do this. And then I took her circular element completely, and then her tag element, and then I just made it my own to fit my own style. And so what I did was I took my dies, which are these beautiful set of circle dies. I mean, look how many choices you get. And then what I did was after I cut my circles... I then I then ran them through my embossing folder and I used this one that had the wave pattern it reminded me of waves and that's what I did I cut my circles and then I ran them through my embossing folder okay because my original plan was to use some embossing here but I wanted to get these cut aparts in because I just loved the sentiments on them and so they really went with my theme okay and then of course up here I just added my title a little bit of embellishment there and here I'll bring this a little closer there's the cut apart and that would be what Laura had in her sketches the photo her tag I just made mine bigger you know to anchor my cut apart and then my circle completely just use that right from Laura's sketch and then just added some enamel dots and some breads and then I got my other dies out and did an anchor and a compass things like that and another die to get in the theme good times so that is how honestly simple that is because remember I didn't have any themed elements you know themed embellishments so I had to make my own and so I just used the color scheme red white and blue and over here I just repeated the same thing and I say that a lot in my videos that if you don't know what you do in your clusters look what you already did work on one till you like it and then just repeat it so the same thing I just put in another compass I put in an anchor added my bread my star breads and enamel dots and my tag with this burlap and I'm gonna talk about this burlap in a minute and then to get this silver element I'll bring this see if I can do that again and show that so you know of course I had silver boy I'm moving everything here I had silver in my title and I had a silver anchor so I knew to click to complete my visual triangle so here here I brought it over here and then I just used that for my date okay and then I had this blue here blue here brought it in again okay and the same thing just wherever you have a pop of blue 
make it over there. You have a pop of silver, put it over here. And then just go by color. And then, of course, you know, what did I repeat? The tags, the burlap, well, the twine. The tags, the twine. Actually, it's like a jute. And the representation of anchors. I mean, just, yes. Now, let me talk about dyes for a minute. Okay? Whenever you're working with dyes and stamps and all kinds of tools, do yourself a little favor and get a little tray or what you can also do is like use the lid of a photo box or anything and keep it on your desk surface and just put your dies and stamps in that till you go to put everything away because I've learned through the years if I don't have a special little place for these things because you know I don't put them right back on because I'm too busy creating I use this once I use that twice I use that twice I use that three times use that once I'm not gonna get them in and out of that envelope every time so just create you know a little tray a little dish or something to keep those you know contained and protected until you put them away because I have lost I haven't lost any dies but I have lost a stamp or two because you know they get flinged all over the place you know what I'm talking about yes okay now let's talk about another tip when it comes to this what do we call it, jute or a real thick twine you know here's what it is okay let's see if I can get hit so, you know, it's hard to manipulate, you see? <laughs> it's so hard to manipulate this when this heavy jute, I guess I'd call it jute twine, okay? But, you know, it gives you such a nice texture, especially on my page, because, you know, I had the rope here, everything in nautical, you know, everything on the boat is tied with something. So I wanted to get that texture in there. So one tip that you can do to manipulate this jute twine to however you want it is simply to take it and wrap it around a pencil. And what that does is it just breaks up that coarseness of it. You know, probably breaks down the fibers a little bit is actually what you're doing. Or you can simply just take it around your finger. And if you do that a few times, that'll break up the stiffness. And then you can manipulate it. And that's how I got to, you know, with this tag here and this tag over here. That's how I got to manipulate. Because that's honestly, <laughs> that looks like a wild child there. Okay, that's how you can do that to manipulate that. And then, of course, over here, I didn't want to put another tag because, you know, that's too, you know, too matchy-matchy. I didn't want to do that. So what I did was I took the jute out of that and I actually wrapped it around. I'll bring it a little closer. I actually wrapped it around that die cut that I had ran through the embossing folder again. So then that just ties in that jute with that and then you know of course you know when you're dealing with nautical nautical mood and feel you know your theme everything is tied in a knot you know when you <laughs> you know when you're dealing with something at the marina right on boats so i think that was it that i wanted to talk about you know keep your dies and your stamps and your embossing folders protected you know break out some tags break out some tools and oh i'm excited to see what everybody plays with I think that was all I wanted to say. Oh, yes, I went over the burlap tip. Okay, now, of course, this is week one of the Sketch Inspired series. So come back on the 17th, and Lisa will have the sketch she picked out, and then her layout prompt and her technique prompt. So excited to play with that. Really am. She picked out a great sketch. And then the link for this sketch here by Vanessa by Vanessa, I'm sorry, by the beautiful Laura Whitaker will be below. And then also to the link to if you want to grab that complete sketchbook of Laura's, you know, grab that while you can. I would suggest doing that. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to say. Again, you know, sketches inspire me. And if you've watched some of my start to finish videos to this to date, I usually start with a sketch when I sit down because I don't want to reinvent the wheel. And so what I really wanted to show in this video is that if you're a one page gal, you know, you can look at two-page sketches and get ideas. If you're a two-page gal, you can certainly use one-page layout ideas to do a spread. I mean, honestly, whenever you see this, because, you know, usually if you're a two-page gal, you have multi-photos. So you're going to bypass this quick as anything because you think in one photo. No, forget about this. Your photos are going to go in the empty space. This is where your embellishments, title, and journaling can go. Okay, so I hope that was a little bit informative. I hope you got something from that. And I love how my page turned out. I really, really do. Of course, who doesn't like red, white, and blue? Yes. Okay. So that's all I have today for this start to finish. And so happy that Vanessa and Lisa asked me to join in on this ride on the Sketch Inspired series. So...
that's all I have today. But the next installment of the Sketch Inspired series will be on the 17th. So come back and in the meantime, play and share. And, you know, oh, love this. Okay, that's all I have today. Come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to learn. Bye. Bye.